In 1775, the Continental Congress created the Chaplain Corps. Under the command of General George Washington, each soldier was required to attend worship service every Sunday. While other armies advanced on their feet, Washington's troops advanced on their knees. It's time for the Chaplain's Report with Caleb Colquitt on tactics. Our Chaplain's Report today, it stems off of something that I was reading. And by the way, you'll be familiar with this guy if you pay attention to conservative media and conservative circles. You know the PragerU University. The PragerU videos, that's actually put together by a guy named Dennis Prager. Now, Dennis Prager is a Orthodox Jew. He's been teaching the Torah for a really long time, and I recently picked up one of his books. It's called The Rational Bible Genesis, because he's, he's doing one for the, every book of the Pentateuch, and so Genesis, of course, is the first one. Now, one of the things that I find fascinating about this, because I like getting other opinions, and I, I like seeing things from other perspectives, and I'm actually going to uh, point out something in, in what Dennis Prager is saying, is I was reading through, and I just started it, Genesis 1-1 and his takeaway from it, which there's basically an entire chapter just on this one verse, but we'll go ahead and read it, and I'm going to point out some of the things that he points out and, and sort of elaborate on it. So this is Genesis 1-1. We're all familiar with it. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. This may be the part of it that you may not be familiar with. The Hebrew word for God is Elohim. Except in this particular form, it's the male, because I know that this is something that's sort of foreign to English speakers, but most languages actually have male and female versions of words. And in this particular one, this word, God, Elohim, is male, and it's also plural. They didn't use the singular for God here. And then the second word used here, created, that's bara. And I hope I'm not butchering that, but I probably am. And what's fascinating about that is it's the male singular form. So there seems almost to be a contradiction within the first verse of the Bible. Why? Now, if you were an Orthodox Jew, actually, you don't even have to be an Orthodox Jew. If you're just a Jew and you have gone through a bar mitzvah, you know that one of the first things that they teach you is Deuteronomy 6. You actually have to memorize that passage in Hebrew. And the, the way that it starts out is, the Lord your God is one God. So why is it that the religion that is famous for essentially coming up with the idea of monotheism and their core principle, the thing that they teach every man when he comes of age, and they kind of make this the most important passage they have, they make it the Lord your God is one God. And remember that Deuteronomy, another book of the Pentateuch, was also penned by Moses. So was Moses crazy and he couldn't remember that there's only one God? Or is there some funny business going on in Genesis 1? That doesn't seem to make any sense. Why would he use the plural of God when talking about who created the earth and then on top of that, why would he change it to the singular in the verb? And it's interesting that Hebrews is one of the only verses, or sorry, the only language in the world that has male and female for its verbs. So I find this fascinating that those two things don't seem to add up. Except in the New Testament. Jewish scholars for thousands of years have debated this and have not found a good answer. There's some speculation, there's some theories, but there's not really a solid definitive answer on this. Unless you know your New Testament. Because if you look in Colossians 1, 15-16, here's your answer. He, talking about Jesus here, is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by him all things were created, both in the heavens and on the earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. Huh. See, that brings 
everything together. Because the Godhead, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, that would be plural. And so it would make sense that when they're talking about in the beginning God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, created singular. Because as we just learned from the book of Colossians, yes, God is the creator of all, but that creation took place through Jesus Christ. It was Jesus Christ, the singular person that is part of the Godhead, through whom all things were created, as we just learned from Colossians. And so that just brings all the pieces right into place. It makes it fit, just like a glove. And there's a great observation from C.S. Lewis. I, to be honest, I read so much Lewis, I sometimes get which book, uh, what, he, what he said, and which book it comes from, what reference it's from. I get those mixed up from time to time because there's so much good in there, and I've read so much of it. So I don't remember where this reference is from. But I know that it was Lewis that said it. He said that the way that you would know that this was not something that was constructed by man, the way that you would know that the New Testament really is the fulfillment, the completion of the Old Testament, is if you were looking at it like a book, and you were reading things in the first part of the book, you were reading things that seemed to foreshadow some things, or some things that didn't really make sense, if that were the case and the author came out with a sequel to the book or a lost last chapter or something like that, the way that you would know whether it was authentically by the same author or this was just a fan fiction thing is if you had seen him laying the groundwork in the first volume. If all of a sudden that last chapter makes other things that happened earlier in the book make sense, and not just in a way that it makes sense with the new version or the new chapter, but other things internally in the first volume make more sense now that you have the light of the second. Well, only God could do that. You would have to assume that that were written by the same author because nobody could have convey nobody could have cooked that up. You couldn't have two people that that worked that out, much less 66 books by 40 authors over thousands of years. And yet, we just looked at Genesis 1-1, which was written thousands of years before Paul penned Colossians. And Paul, with just a couple of simple verses, makes that first verse make sense. No human being could have pulled that off. It is one of the great internal proofs in the Bible that it could have only been orchestrated by an almighty, all-knowing, all-seeing God. God in three persons, yet is one who created the earth through his Son, Jesus Christ. That's the only way that Genesis 1-1 actually makes sense. It brings everything else into full view. Stay the course, friends. Now, I know you're here because you're interested in information on what's going on in the state of Alabama and around the world, and you've come to the right place for that. But it's YouTube, so you could also just be here because you're bored. If you want me to keep making videos to keep you occupied, you need to go ahead and like and subscribe. Otherwise, you're going to have to go back to playing Minesweeper.